The Big Footy Port LA podcast is proudly sponsored by New Vision. My team, Kanda, power. I love the power. power, power. I love the power. power, power. Hi everyone, Mac 19 here and you are listening to the Big Footy Port LA podcast live once again on Port Fan Radio and joining me as co-host in the uh, in the co-host chair is uh, Rick. How are you buddy? Yes, very good, my friend. What about you? Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. Not too bad. Not too yeah, bad. it's uh, getting bit a bit of a drama-filled week, there. but uh, that's all right. And yeah, yes, we all need drama-filled weeks. We do. Yeah, uh, it makes us appreciate the good weeks by having the drama-filled week. So uh, indeed. Yes, that's right. And look back on the podcast once again. We've got Janus. Hello. Hey, yes, how you going, mate? <laughs> I'm good, Fisting, how are you? Yes, very good. Good to have you back on again. That's fisting, it. Rick's excited. <laughs> Don't get too have excited. Have back on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. It begins. That's wonderful. <laughs> well, look, before we get into the, uh, the preview, we've got uh, quite a bit to talk about um, before we actually get onto the game on Saturday. Um, I guess the first thing we should probably talk about is uh, the injury for Jackson Trengove. Uh, looks like we're going to be without him for around about six weeks after Scans came back on his injured foot showing a, a bit of ligament damage. Um, and look, we've all known uh, the issues we've had trying to win games without uh, Jacko over the last couple of years. I think we're four wins from 12 matches from uh, without him in the last two years. Were you uh, a little bit concerned about this or is it just one of those quirky stats that you sometimes get in sport? Quirking. I reckon. <laughs> it wouldn't it be ironic actually if this <laughs> this year we uh, we actually started winning games while he's out injured? Then it then it would really boil all our minds, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yes, it definitely would. But I mean, part of me is thinking that um, no injury is a good thing, and especially to a key defender. But you know, this might answer the debate: Are we one tall, uh, two top heavy? Uh, which has been a theory going around because that's obviously uh, going to alleviate that problem and, and even a little bit more with the selections this week. But, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if we have our running game back on this week with the uh, with a smaller team. Mm. Yeah, because I know that last year, I remember in one of the games during that run or just before it, that Hinkley was talking about the fact that we were too tall. And he said, oh, we need to get rid of one of our players. And that's why we did this particular thing because we had a too tall defense. And I'm just thinking what the change was in his thinking that we could play so many taller players. But I don't know. Well, I guess we'll find out on the weekend and during the coming weeks. Mm. That's it. I mean, he's a bit of a crucial loss, really. But... um... No, I think he's probably more important to our structure and, and defensive makeup than a lot of people give him credit for. I know all Port fans think he's a fantastic player, and he is a fantastic player, but I don't think he gets the credit across the AFL that he deserves for the type of player that he is. I mean, you know, he really, really gets beaten, um, and he provides us with fantastic structure, and you know, he's, uh, you know, he can go into the ruck and, and perform a, a fantastic role there as well. So I guess we want to hear you guys... Um, out there in uh, in Twitter land, in social media land, and um, you know, tweet Port Fan Radio and uh, tell us what you think about uh, Jackson Trengove's injury. Um, and you know, is it one of those sort of quirky stats that we get in sport, or are we going to be a little bit concerned about uh, how we're going to perform without him in the side? Mm. Um, and I guess the other the other main um, uh, thing this week is uh, is two fantastic re-signings that we've done um, out of the blue, I guess. Um, I certainly wasn't expecting them, but uh, Jarman Impey's re-signed for three years, keeping him at the club until the end of uh, 2018. Um, I've got to say, that's a good re-signing uh, for a young player. Definitely. Shows you that um, you can see the direction the club's going, and uh, he's happy with what um, the coaching staff have got in store for him, what they've got planned, and that sort of thing. So, yeah. Definitely a good signing, and he definitely shores up a position that we've been light on in in the past. Yep. 
doubt. Yeah, it's a good sign of confidence uh, um, both ways, I think. Yeah, but well, we don't really have um, many players not willing to sign on, do we? So we're in a pretty uh, luxurious position at this point in time. Yep, that's true. Very true. And the second mm. player we've re-signed is, uh, is the big Cobra, Matty Broadbent, uh, who signed for a massive four years, keeping him at the club until the end of 2019, which, um, you know, I guess puts him into his late, ni- uh, late 90s, late 20s. Um, so, yeah, I-, I think that's a fantastic signing as well for a... Uh, you know, a lifelong Port supporter. You know, he, he loves the club and, you know, the club loves him too. When, was the, um, when technically would he have been a restricted free agent in a couple of years? He's 24 now, isn't he? So probably another year or two. So so it would have really pushed him past that free agency period, wouldn't it? Uh, next year, I think, uh, yeah. he would become. So, I mean, it's a it's a great show of strength by um, Matty Broadbent because I guess he could have only asked for a, a minor contract extension to to try and play the hand of um, you know trying to clutch more money out of us or or threaten to walk sort of thing. So, um, kudos to him that he uh, he loves the club that much and is willing to make that sort of commitment. And maybe potentially sacrifice some money in the meantime of doing it. I don't know if it's just me, but I was never worried about him going anywhere. He just seems to be one of those players that's going to, when the time comes to sign the contract, he's just going to sign it and just stay with the club all the time. And the club's going to stick by him and look after him how he needs to be. Kind of like Kane Corns was. Yeah, Yeah. but it's uh, it's a less... It's a lessening trait in the AFL now because... Uh, oh, no, 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 you know, no doubt, no doubt. They're, they're all advised by their player managers to play this sort of game as well. So, yeah, you know, it's a good show of character by uh, by Matthew and, uh, you know, hopefully he gets rewarded uh, by the club, uh, especially seeing he got, uh, he got rested, so to speak. He could have spat the dummy over that and, uh, yeah, I think it's a great signing. I think he had a bit of a, a shoulder issue, so there was a bit of an undisclosed injury that um, that didn't get told about last week, I think. Right. Well, how do you know about this? No idea. No idea. <laughs> From the Twitter sphere. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Lucky guess, I guess. How's our How's our mate Crazy Big Al? Is he has he tweeted in yet? Because uh, he, he has. sounded like he was, he sounded like he was a bit fired up tonight. He he was ready for some action. Yeah, that's it. Look, he's uh, he's given us a couple of tweets to start with. Uh, his first one: "Anus and fisting Rick go to ke- uh, go together as well as cheese and crackers," which is uh, <laughs> probably true. And uh, he's also said, uh, "We can't perform any worse at the moment, but Jacko is a massive loss." Um, and love both the re-signings. We are a club of choice these days. Are we having the dreaded um, foot curse that we? sort of went through last year as well. Remember we had this sort of spate of foot injuries uh, and there seems yep. to be more and more sneaking up again. Yeah, Nicholas Teal has uh, tweeted in and said, ankles, feet, Achilles, what's going on with our players, even Ryder, um, which we'll get to in a moment as well. But uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Is it is it because of training? Is it because of overtraining? Um, I don't know. Well, do, I don't notice it at other clubs that they're, so pronounced with one particular type of injury, um, whereas it seems to be more noticeable with uh, with the Port Adelaide Footy Club. Or maybe that's just because I follow them more. I don't know. It wouldn't be anything to do with, and I'm just talking off the wall here, um, all the other clubs train at a certain um, venues and stuff. It's not anything to do with, like, Adelaide Oval surface or Alberton surface or anything like that, is it? Like, in terms of being specifically hard or underfoot or anything like that because it's just that it's just weird that it's happening to all our players again in this, well, you'd, have it, to, it, you'd, you'd have to think then it would have to be Albert and over unless the Adelaide Crows were receiving an excessive amount of ankle injuries as well I mean maybe that's why they're thinking of doing a different uh, center of excellence for the training and things like that for that particular task not in terms of game day simulation or anything like that, but just like if doing running drills and things, that sort of stuff. I don't know. I'm just... I, find it highly, I find it highly unlikely, though. I mean, God, how long have they been training there for? 
150 yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know? I mean, and, but... Uh, it's, it's not like it's over a car park, so... Yeah, that's you, true. You'd think the, you'd think the soil and the, and the conditions would be suitable for, for training uh, without injury, so then you could only, like Mac said, only really narrow it down to is it maybe our uh, high-performance running regime? Is that maybe uh, weakening the feet? Are they not wearing the right shoes? Is it the yes. is it well, the footwear? Look- do they need yeah, yeah? Do they need podiatrists, innersoles, or something? <laughs> podiatrists. <laughs> they need oh, those. Maybe yeah. we need to get Boulder from the X Files on. Yeah, they need those. Uh, all the-, the crutches that Forrest Gump was wearing. You know, run, Forrest, run. <laughs> maybe the X Files you know, those- can explain. Yeah. Oh, we've got a tweet think- from uh, Bevan as well who says uh, Jacko is a heart and soul player, a kid from Victoria who brought in and epitomizes what the PAFC is all about. And he also adds, uh, no singing tonight, please, which uh, I definitely agree with as well. Love me tender, love me No! <laughs> no. <laughs> all I want is you. Yeah, thank you very much. Hey. Lovely. Well done. Let's move on <laughs> and uh, t- <laughs> talk about uh, Gus Monfries as he plays his 200th AFL game of footy uh, this week. Um, it will also be his 50th game for the Port Adelaide Footy Club. Uh, many he played 150 for Essendon. Um, you know, he's been a, a very good pickup for the Port Adelaide Footy Club, I reckon. Is he one of the most underrated 200 game players going around? Probably. He's had a, a pretty consistent career. I mean, he hasn't really had too many down years. You know, he's been a, a main part of, you know, two two different clubs. Um, you know, hopefully he's got a, a lot more footy in him. Angus will forever be immortalised in Showdown 35 for that bounce. That's it. For the bounce. Uh, he, he, he could, yeah, he could do nothing for the rest of his career and he'd still be a Port Adelaide legend just for that particular kick. <laughs> so and the fact and the fact oh, yeah. that he the fact that he's you know he's still performing to a granted this year he hasn't been doing that well even by his own admission he's saying that but he's starting to recapture that form and starting to get back to his best I reckon over the past couple of weeks so yeah he's just going to go from strength to strength I think during the rest of the season. Well, He's very durable, so there's you know he could even push close to 300 games the way he's going. And you know I think the, they were saying on the radio today that only three or four percent of the players actually get to 200 games. So you know it's it's a strong achievement for what he's been able to do as a uh, as a football player. And I think he uh, gets undervalued by our supporters a little bit for his influence. And I thought like last week his first half was uh, fantastic, and he was one of the more influential players on the ground and but people are still calling for him to be replaced in the side. So but I don't think he gets the kudos that he deserves sometimes. No, that's right. And uh, look, we'll move on and talk about the preview for this week now. It's uh, Port versus Melbourne this Saturday at uh, TIO Stadium in Alice Springs. Uh, we've got a 17-11 win-loss record, including winning the last five games against Melbourne. Uh, last you, missed, time we uh, met, you missed something. Here's something else, Maka. What's that? They've got another. In, you, you've got another innovation. The Port LA Footy Club. They're going to have Which meet is... and greet players at SANFL games to try oh, and increase, good. to try and increase SANFL numbers. So you can go down and kick and catch with the Port players at half time at SANFL games. Okay. How could you miss that that's, up? That's uh, that's interesting. <laughs> Well, it's giving back to the Maybe, SANFL, Rick, I was saving that uh, for the SANFL section later on. Oh, shit. And I cut you off halfway <laughs> through your stuff. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were going through all the you important announcements. Muppet. Absolute you through, Muppet. <laughs> you were going through all the important announcements. I thought that was a pretty <laughs> important announcement. That was. Uh, I think that's quite a good idea by the Port Adelaide Footy Club. But I won't it say is. anything yep. more about it. Until the SANFL section, go along on your own merry way. Pretty sure this said all that needs to be said. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, last time we met was that uh, lucky three-point winner Adelaide Oval last year in Dom Cassisi's last game. Um, I guess the first question is: Are we concerned that we're going to lose this one? Kane should have retired this week. <laughs> Define concerned. Like uh, worried. 
frustrated. <laughs> now, what I mean Shitting by that one is, still. Like, um, Fretting. It's, it's going to be what it's going to be. So lovely is what I say about this game. Like, there's nothing. Think, yeah. There's we're nothing gonna we're going to be able to. Yeah. Well, I can understand why people would think that. But I mean, it's put it this way: if you're a Port supporter, if Melbourne's still paying three dollars thirty at the bookies, I'd get on Melbourne at three dollars thirty. Because no, it's definitely not a you never never bet against your own team. Never. Yeah, of course they. So that way if you lose, at least you feel a little bit better because you made some money out of it. <laughs> yeah, Betcha Tribe's put Betcha Tribe's putting a green bill on the uh, on the demons this week. He's he's a bit of a punting fan. Yeah, I suppose. Yep. <laughs> okay. I suppose if you if you do it, then yeah, good luck. Good luck to you, I say. But yeah. yeah. Just not something that I'd be like going, oh, yeah, going to do that. Yeah, it's just, yeah, I don't know. Well, look, Melbourne, money. let's talk about Melbourne. Let's yes. talk about Melbourne for a little bit. Um, you know, they have improved from last year. They, they've they got, uh, well, they're having less disposals, but they've had more inside 50s, more clearances, more contested possessions, uh, which I, I reckon shows that they're playing, um, you know, a bit more direct and some faster football. Last year, they were uh, they were incredibly boring to watch. Lots of slow, chippy passes in the back line, and you know, just really struggled to get it forward of uh, forward of centre. But you know, they are playing better this year. They've beaten Gold Coast, they've beaten Richmond, and, and of course, last week they beat the Dogs. Um, and they did dominate all the key stats against the Dogs as well. You know, tackles inside fifties, clearances, marks inside fifty, uh, contested possessions as well. So. They are coming into this game with a, a little bit of form. Yes. Yes. So they've been smacked by the better teams, haven't they? They have. Yep. That's the so question. They're... Are we a better team? Well, at the not, moment, probably not at the moment. Or, yeah, no, no, you can say that, could you? Yeah. <laughs> no. But I mean, but... it just shows that Melbourne's very bipolar with their performance. Yeah. So it um... just shows that they've got a long way to go, but um, against yeah. uh, lesser sides, they can compete and. And generally come out with a, with a decent victory, I guess. But who's who's actually uh, really excited to to watch that Jesse Hogan play? Yeah, me. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He has been a bit of a revelation this year, and you know he's averaging I think it's around seven marks and two goals a game, and you know he's got uh, seventeen contested marks for the year, which is one behind the uh, the league leader. So, you know, he has had a very good start to his career, and. You know, I guess um, you know he's had a had a lot of hype going into this season, and he is delivering on that at the moment. I reckon he's a cracker. He, uh, you know, he's one of those players you look at and go, oh, "Damn, you know, maybe we should have thrown the kitchen sink to get him." <laughs> you know, especially with our forward woes, uh, and he just looks like a gem of a player. And he's one of those players you can, even though they're on the op- opposition team, you can enjoy watching them. And uh, with Alipade's performance from last week, you would. Uh, Hope it's a little bit improved this week. Yeah. Melbourne got him because they were finished down the bottom of the ladder when they got him through the mini draft, that's right. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there was no way we could actually be able to bid for his services anyway. So it was again one of those things where no, if we'd had no. if we'd oh, I was gonna say if we'd had priority picks like every other team had, you know, at that particular time, maybe you could have done something there, but yeah. We could have, but we would have had to sell our soul and probably uh, we probably wouldn't have the unity in the playing group that we've got now uh, with what yeah. we would have had to have offload to get it. You know, it might have been like a, a Robbie Gray or a Hamish Hartlett or, um, you know, or someone uh, really high profile uh, to get it. So, um, you know, I guess with hindsight, or well, the benefit of hindsight, you can sort of look at it. But, you know, it probably wasn't practical for it to be done. Um, Macca was a big fan of doing it at the time. He was keen to get rid yeah, of look. Boke and West off. And... <laughs> oh yeah, look, <laughs> trade all our good players. That would have been uh, that would have been fantastic. But look, they, I don't actually think they, um, they sold their soul to get him. To be honest, I think they got him relatively cheaply for what. Mm. Um, for what could have been the case. I think they traded picks of 3 and 14 from memory, and they got back um, that mini draft pick number 2, um, pick 20, and also Dom Barry, who's no longer at the club. But, but didn't you know, they have that's a, a, that's a That's a bloody good trade. 
Didn't they yeah, have definitely. a Scully compensation pick or something around there as well? Yeah, well, that was... Yeah, that's what they traded, so... Yeah. Yeah, that's right. right so to, they was... to trade pick three and 14 and get the best young, you know, key position forward and pick 20 back, you know, that's... Uh, <laughs> you know, they've, uh, they've done very well there. Absolutely. I mean, if we had so... those picks, I would have done it. I definitely would have done it oh, if we had no, those yeah. picks. But yeah. Yeah. we didn't have them, so therefore we would have had to give it up. Something Over the odds up. of the... Yeah. Well, yeah. So. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So what about well, that... um, the Vince Meister for Melbourne? The Vince has Meister. He been a, has he been a bit of a turnaround player since he's gone to the Demons? Yeah, he's certainly turned his career around a bit. Um, yeah, a bit of a change in role. He's uh, he's done some great tagging jobs so far this year. You know, he tagged uh, Dangerfield in that uh, memorable game where they were both going sort of hammer and tongs at each other for a while. And uh, yeah, you know, he had a really good game on Bontempelli last week as well. So I guess the question is, who do we expect him to go to this week? The Boakmeister. I reckon Ski he's boat? going to go to Gray over uh, over Boak. Well, if they do that, I hope they play Gray up forward for a fair chunk of the game. I think that could work to our advantage. Which begs the question, who's going to play in the midfield if Gray goes forward? Wingard. Mm, okay. Easy. I think I'm liking Wingard's um, midfield time at the moment. So uh, I think that's uh, quite a uh, easy interchangeable swap between the two and you, we wouldn't be losing much. I mean... I'm still, uh, my only highlight really from last week was that Wingard contested handball through it, which led to the Monfrey's goal, which I just thought was a, a sublime piece of play. Wingard is a rare talent. I reckon he could probably go back into defence and play pretty well. Yeah, he could. Anyway, I'd cut Macca off again, so <laughs> off you go, Macca. <laughs> That's all right. I was just going to talk about uh, the selections this week. Uh, Melbourne have brought back in Neville Jetta, normally plays in defence, and Jack Viney as well. And they've uh, omitted Aidan Riley and our old mate uh, Benny Newton, which is uh, pretty disappointing. I was looking forward to seeing what he could do against us this week. Maybe had one of those stipulations when he was traded, he doesn't play against us. It's like they do in soccer. <laughs> he, he loves Port Adelaide so much that he just <laughs> couldn't bear to play against us. Exactly right. It's like, no, sorry. Mm. Has he been in decent form this year, or obviously not if he's got dropped? He's been consistent. He's been consistent without being sort of fantastic. He's sort of he's sort of getting his sort of fifteen or seventeen touches and a goal a week, basically, which is pretty good for his sort yeah. of player. Well, I mean, that's what he was sort of showing at Port Adelaide as well, wasn't it? Yeah. The guys that they brought in are they quicker? Like Viney is just Viney's Viney. But the other guy, yeah, is he Jetta's got any? Quick. Yeah, Jerry got Jetta, yeah. but the other, what is what was his name? Aiden something or other. Aiden Riley, he's been omitted as well. Oh, okay, yep, yeah. okay, fair enough. Yeah. No, the only reason why I was saying that was because um, if we're going to deal with the same game plan we dealt with last week and the week before, it's going to be all to do with how fast the players can get back into the zone for them for Melbourne. So possibly that's the reason why. Newton was omitted because yeah. he's not the quickest player. So in terms of actually doing that sort of game plan, you're going to need, I think Ruse is going to pick or he's going to need all the fast players that he can get to go into those zones and doing the press and all that sort of stuff. That's it. Well, look, uh, we'll talk about Port's selections. We've uh, omitted three players uh, through injury. Um, Trengove goes out with his ankle, as we've just mentioned. Uh, Kane Corns. Uh, is retired, so I guess that's a mental injury. It's a, pretty, and, uh, a pretty severe injury, <laughs> yeah. A pretty severe injury. And Patrick Ryder is out with an Achilles, uh, which is a bit of a shock as well. But uh, look, back into the side comes the Cobra. Um, and then two players for their first game uh, for the season in Tom Cleary and Paul Stewart. Has Tom Cleary been in that good a form? Because they were pumping him up on the radio at, when I was listening in for the selections, but I didn't think his form was that strong. His form's been solid. Like, it's been pretty good. Yeah. Like, he hasn't really done anything wrong this year. So, I think he certainly deserves a go with uh, with Trengove out of the side. I guess it would have been between him and Austin, but Austin's um, injured at the moment, so he won't be playing for the Magpies this week either. 
Um, so I guess it makes sense that they brought in Tom Cleary. And look, um, I really hope he takes this chance and you know he's deserved game time or, or more game time than what he's been given so far in his career. And you know, hopefully he makes this one a winner. Well, he's going to have a uh, if he's replacing Trengove, he's going to have a good six week run at it, isn't he? Yeah, you would think so. Yep. And uh, Paul Stewart comes in. He's obviously been in fantastic form in the SANFL and you know deserves his crack as well. Yeah, hey, I'm really excited by Paul Stewart getting an opportunity. Um, you know, I, I don't think he's done enough in the past uh, to warrant keeping his spot in the side, but he's always been a hard player. But I mean, you can only ask someone to to keep stacking up performances in the in the reserves until you can get an opportunity, and that's what he's done. He's he's thoroughly deserved another opportunity to show what he can do at AFL level. Yeah, yeah. I guess the big question is, um, there's been a, as there normally is on a Thursday night, there's been a lot of uh, sort of doomsdayers on the selection thread, um, disgusted, you know, annoyed that uh, Sammy Gray is still in the side. Um, are you guys happy that he's getting another go this week? Yes, I, I don't think it's very fair at all to um, just put him off the rookie list, give him a game, and then flick him off. I mean. Uh, you need to give someone an opportunity at times, and I don't know if these critics have uh, played football themselves, but I guess uh, if they had, you know, how would they feel as a footballer if they got elevated to a higher level and then got one opportunity and then uh, were turfed back out and never to be seen again, which is what some people seem to be wanting. Uh, I noticed the comparison to a inanimate carbon rod was given. Um, I think that's very... Very harsh. I mean, if they want that media, play, they want that poor player out there. I'm sure I can pull on the boots and a jumper and uh, give them something to laugh at. I can sing at the same time, but I think he thoroughly deserves another opportunity to show what he can uh, show us at AFL level. Is it going to be his last opportunity? You think if he doesn't perform this week, it might be his last chance? Well, Janus isn't gonna. If Janus isn't gonna answer, so I'll answer for Janus. No, no, I don't think so, Macca. I think there's at least a couple of weeks in uh, Sam Gray to have an opportunity to cement himself in the side. Yeah, well done, Janus. Yeah, so, sorry. Yeah, what, what do you think, Rick? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that, Janus. That's uh, that's exactly right. That's how it should be. I mean, you've got to give a person a fair opportunity to deserve a to deserve their crack. <laughs> Well, I, funny, I guess a lot funny. of people are sort of uh, uh, questioning that um, maybe we should have brought in another inside mid, so maybe Andrew Moore or Aaron Young instead. I'll tell you what I really think right, about this whole thing. Last year, when Sam Gray was brought in, I could get behind it because Angus Monfries was injured, and therefore we needed another small forward or that smallish forward. But I don't know. I just don't understand the rationale between playing Sam Gray, who I fully agree with you guys. He needs his opportunity to show what he can do, but he doesn't play the role that we're asking him to play in the SNFL. But right? maybe, we... um, maybe, but maybe um, Chad Wingard and Robbie Gray aren't going to be playing that much time up forward. So they're looking at um, Sam Gray to be the other forward pocket alongside Angus Mumphreys. Yes, that's that could be true. But didn't you just say that if Gray was being tagged, you want him to go up forward and swap between Wingard and doing that thing? Well, I would hope that we play uh, two or three tall forwards up forward and have two or three crummers. So I can't see why we can't have three crumming um, forwards in Robbie Gray, Angus Mumphreys and uh, Sam Gray, if need be. I guess the whole point is, I've got no problem with Gray, the idea of Gray is playing as a small forward, and I agree with all that, but I just don't know if he's going to have, or if he has the skill set required to play at AFL level. That's that's the only question that I've got of it. If he can capture that sort of form and actually play that way, and the coaches believe that that's he's got the skill set necessary and the skills and the tools needed to perform at AFL level and a small forward that pressure forward that Neve did for us in the finals where it's definitely something we were missing but the other thing I've also got is is that we're not playing a rider anymore so there's that dynamic that's changed now 
So it's basically gone yeah. back to the 2014 tactics is basically what we're going to try and do again, I guess. Is that a, is that a bad thing? Uh, Seeing 2015 ain't working too well. <laughs> uh, maybe, uh, maybe putting West off back to a more semi-permanent forward might actually... Um, I think we can get more answers this week now with the injuries that we've got um, in relation to performance of certain players. So um, it'll be interesting to watch Westhoff's output up forward if that improves this week, um, especially. Uh, so I think that's, there's a couple of little saving graces here that's going to answer a few questions over the next couple of weeks. So, um, yeah, look, I think we're being very harsh on Sam Gray, judging him after one game. He did look like he was... He struggled to pick up the tempo of the AFL from the SANFL. So I think another week uh, in the team will really show us. And again, maybe this is another part reason why Andrew Moore and Aaron Young haven't been selected because um, they're, looking at, they're going to look at maybe playing Chad Wingard and Robbie Gray more in the middle and, uh, and therefore them as midfielders and not as more forward flankers haven't been selected in the side. And Aaron Young's had his opportunity as well. Yeah, I wouldn't have mind uh, Youngy coming back in, but I don't know. I mean, Andrew Moore, a lot of people have said, oh, Andrew Moore should come back in, but by Saturday he would have played one game in the last 42 uh, days, which, you know, I'm, I can't see why we would bring in a player that's, um, you know, only played one game in the last six weeks. We've already in Wines, so who played one game in the last four. I mean, obviously they're not the same sort of player, but if you're going to use that... Yeah, but Wines that... is, you know, one of our best players. Andrew Moore's, you know, what, yeah, yeah, number yeah. 25 I... or 26 <laughs> on the list. Yeah. So. yeah, but, yeah. All I'm saying is, is, like, just using time as a... as a um, The only reason why you're not going to play a player is because he hasn't had game time. I mean, you look at Jasper Pittard, I think it was in 2013. How long did he stay off with a hamstring? I think it was, like, 12 weeks or something like that, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. I can't remember, but he came straight back in after that. Didn't play one game for the Magpies or whoever he was playing for. So, I don't know. It's just... uh, But, again, I can understand... Like I said, I can understand why the coaching staff are going the way they want to go with Sam Gray. And if they want to see what our uh, game plan is like and stacks up that particular way, then, yeah, all we can do is back what they... I'm always of the opinion that the coaching staff knows a little bit more about the players because they see them all the time at training and they know what they're looking for, whereas we're just looking from the outside and we don't know what the game plan is supposed to be. We don't know where those players are meant to be standing. So until we do know that, then you've got to be tempering your opinions by about probably 30%, I reckon. Of what I hope the coaches saying. know what their game plan is because I've got no <laughs> friggin' idea at this point in time. I'm still guessing. That's well, that's it. the thing. Like you were talking before, Rick, about uh, the game plan from 2014 to 2015 has changed. Um, I don't know. I think it might be the fact that because they're going to play the same sort of de- um, defense or the defensive tactics that they did in 2014, that ruse style. You know how he worked us out in. I think it was the first game he definitely worked us out but we were good enough and had enough momentum to carry it through but that second one where we only just scraped over the line by two points with that kick after the siren or whatever it was um yeah that showed that we were starting to see tactics that were specifically tailored to our game plan and it's up to the players to work through that I think. Well, Ruse was a little bit different last year to what's being implemented this year because his was really about flooding numbers around the ball and really trying to, to stop the ball coming out. And, and that was uh, something that really the players struggled to adjusting with, whereas um, this year when the, the opposition seemed to be more hell-bent on um, on negating our switch play and, and having uh, a lot of numbers deep in their zone so if we do get a switch or try to run the ball they've got extra numbers in our um, forward 50 really quickly and uh, giving out numbered contests in that zone so yeah it'll be interesting to see if Rose goes with that uh, flooding around the ball style or if he goes to the more modern uh, 2015 game plan that um, people are interested in I'm also interested we should we should have a in a in the bye week Mac or a philosophical 
debate on the um, the game plan of 2015 because something of interest that came up on the on the radio today was Ross Lyon making reference about our Fremantles had the least amount of tackles and the least amount of stoppages, which really made a it was an interesting thing that he pointed out. And why did he point that out? Um, does that mean they're just flooding back and not really pressuring the ball carrier and just waiting for um, the opposition to turn the ball over and then and then they sort of do their own slingshot forward? And is that why they they've got such a a minimal amount of um, uh, stoppages in their games and even tackles, and and it's something that's being implemented against us as well. Well, they have the least amount of stoppages and tackles because they have the second most uh, disposals. Uh, they don't need to tackle because they're good enough to win their own ball, and they keep the ball. That's uh, that's the difference. And that's and that's part of our problem this year, isn't it? When you're yeah. tackling and doing that sort of thing. You are second to the ball, right? That means the other team has got the ball first, and I guess that, as Maka said, they've got the possession, and they're keeping possession. They're good enough to keep it, but still, so there's no need for them to go in there and wait for the other team to get it and tackle them. You know, so it's I guess a defense through offense. Yeah, mm. that's it. So and I mean, we... those two those two things are linked. I mean, tackles and stoppages, that those two things are linked. So if they've got the least amount of tackles, then it's fair to say that, you know, that they probably also have, you know, minimal amount of uh, stoppages as well. So what do we need or to do on versa. Saturday? I think we just need to play our own game. I think we need to, to find some sort of confidence, get it, in, get it in up forward quick, you know, try and ensure that Melbourne don't, don't have time to sort of flood uh, numbers back. Um, I'm interested in a few matchups to see what's going to happen. Um, I think our midfield is good enough to get well on top of theirs. Um, I guess it's just a matter of whether they do actually turn up on the day and look Loby back to uh, being the sole ruckman again. It's going to be interesting how he goes against Jamar. Yes, I agree with all that. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, I was distracted with something. Um, we definitely need to move the ball quickly. And one of the things I noticed at the game on Sunday and every pretty much every home game, apart from the Hawthorne game is, and I don't know why this is, our players have this refusal to run and present on leads, like multiple mm. leads and multiple running, which was yeah. something that we did in 2014. Like you saw it and people were running everywhere and they were running these patterns and plays and stuff. And it was good, but... It's got to be a coaching directive or something like that for them to be afraid or... Sorry, I'll take that back. It doesn't have to be a coaching directive. Either they're afraid to run because they're coached to be so defensively orientated or they're coached to stand there and focus on defense, if that makes sense. You know, because I don't understand why we don't get any... There's no movement in the midfield at all. Even when you're playing with the... Like, one of the things that um, coaches will do in the Richmond game, the West Coast game, they'll clog up the midfield and not allow us to get into that corridor to do that switch play. But no one's running through there. And I don't care how good a player 22 players are um, or the 18 players on the field. They're not going to be able to clog up every single bit of space on the field. It's just impossible. So if we're not working hard enough to present, um, it's definitely going to be a problem on Sunday and you'll get exactly the same result if the players don't um, push themselves. Well, I, I hope guess. the problem's on Saturday and not Sunday because... Uh, oh, Saturday. Well, Saturday then. <laughs> Sunday would Sunday be good because then it, that might only be the Maggies losing and not the uh, Power Boys. So... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I can Sorry. wear that if that's the case. I, uh, I was so used to having Sunday games for the past few weeks that I just assumed that it was on Sunday again. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just being facetious. Look, we've started a bit of a, uh, a brawl on Twitter between Nicholas Teal and Crazy Big Al, who were going hammer and tongs at it over Sam Gray. Obviously, Sammy Gray is one of Nicholas Teal's best uh, or most favourite players, and Crazy Big Al is not a big fan, I've got to say. 
<laughs> well, that's. I hope the two hosts of their respective shows uh, keep it <laughs> keep it amicable. That's it. Well, look, boys, who are gonna, who's going to win this week? Can we break this uh, this mini rut that we're in and uh, get our season back on track? What are they going to win? By thirty-seven points. Nice. Righty, eh? Rick? I'm going to Mel- I'm going to Melbourne by about eight goals. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> eight goals. <laughs> okay, Sorry, that's, uh, I wasn't expecting that. Um, look, I'm going to say Port by uh, 15 points. I think we will break this rut that we're in this week. Um, and I'm going to say uh, West off to kick uh, four goals. Nice work. I will say, though, that I will be tipping us next week to beat the Bulldogs. So I think we'll lose this week. And then we'll come good the following week. And then we'll make our charge until we place the week. Okay. Well, look, uh, Rick, do you want to do your who am I? Who am I? Well, I was born in in 1973. I have Dutch parents. uh, I was born in Australia. And, uh, you know, went north through high. You're stalling, aren't you? You, You're talking about me? You're stalling. Oh, I thought you were talking about on. me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Who am I? Well, I reckon, I reckon this way we should do it different. I reckon someone should call up first before we give a clue. So okay. uh, I want a caller first. <clears throat> so, uh, call in people. Uh, I want, if, so, if no one calls in, well, I don't give if a clue. If anyone's listening. Okay. If there is anyone listening. Is there anyone listening? There is a few people listening, so that's good. Oh, cool. well, there you go. So, someone has to call in. Who was last week that was shy? Caitlin. Caitlin, if you're listening, call in. So, um, don't be shy. We waffle on every night, so, uh, and we'll see how we go. And Mr. Isaac, speaker, got his uh, got his voucher sorted, so... Um, good, that's good. He, we've, we've coughed up the money there, so, I don't know, I'm waiting to hear what he got. I still like those new um, those new jackets that they're wearing. I reckon they look really, really cool. I wouldn't mind one of those. Well, if someone wins it this week, it could go towards the um, it could go towards the uh, Aboriginal Guernsey. Yeah, what do you boys think of the Aboriginal Guernsey? Well, let's uh, we've we've got a call. We've got uh, Crazy Big Owl calling in. Crazy Big Owl. <laughs> Crazy Big Owl. Here he is. Oh God. Good afternoon, ladies, or good evening, ladies. How are Crazy we? big hour. Yeah, we, I'm good, mate. I'm good. You can go in the draw because you've got uh, you've got no idea who it is, and, uh, <laughs> That's it. and it'll be you'll be a good winner because it'll take you ages before you can actually get the uh, redeem the voucher. <laughs> yeah, That's it. Right. Well, look, let's uh, let's get on with it. Um, the previous two questions. Do you want to re- repeat them, Rick? So, was on an AFL list. Is that right? Was on Port's AFL list, yep. Yes. And seven years? Yep. Yeah. So, what's the, third, uh, what's the third clue? Oh, so I have to give another one? Yes. Uh, shit, I didn't even think about that, Macca. <laughs> you've, you've caught me off guard. Um, all right, what else could there be? Uh, Production man. They weren't. On, they weren't on our list after two thousand and five. So they they were on our list prior to two thousand five. Could be that they were. Could be that they weren't on our list in two thousand and five. But they were on our list at some stage before two thousand and five. Jared Poulton. No. Bad what a life. good guess. What a great player. Good guess. That is a good guess. He's my favourite player. Oh, I wouldn't have never guessed. Not Darren Smith by any, any chance was your second favourite. No, that, that's that's Phil's favourite. Um, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's where the man crush comes from, Phil. I've got no... I, I, I like Darren Smith, but I'm no... like I don't want to have his children or anything like that. <laughs> good work. All yes. right. Thanks, Al. Bad thanks, luck. Thanks, Al. He's gone. Cut off.
All right, let's talk about uh, the SANFL. It's uh, Port versus Glenelg at Albert and Oval. We've got a 174-68 to 68 win-loss record. And uh, last time we met wasn't uh, a happy result. It was Glenelg by 32 points uh, late last year. Uh, a lot of changes in and out of the side this week uh, with uh, Sammy Cahoon, Kane Mitchell, Cam O'Shea coming back in. The possibility for some uh, uncontracted players like uh, Benny Sawford, Robbie Young, Jonathan Ross playing as well. And um, who's out? Uh, who is out? Uh, obviously, Sammy Gray, Tom Cleary, and Paul Stewart will be playing in the AFL. Um, Archie's out with a bit of a knee injury. Um, Austin's out with a groin. And Johnny Butcher is out, um, but it doesn't state the reason why. Well, I thought he was out because he hmm. like, bit his tongue in a half or something. Well, it could be possible, yep. Yeah, supposedly that was a pretty uh, bad injury that he did to himself. I think so. What do you and think, all I know is, All I know is I, I've bitten my tongue before and I didn't need stitches and that bloody hurt. So I can imagine biting it to the point where you need stitches. That would be painful. I can't imagine stitches in your tongue. That would be uh, not too pleasant. It's horrible. No. How do you keep that dry? Hmm. <laughs> Perplexing. Yep. Well, how are we going to, with so many changes? Asking the now, serious questions on the Big Footy Port LA podcast, right? I now. am. If anyone is a doctor and they're listening, please let us know. Because I reckon it would be quite annoying having your tongue bandaged. Mm. Man, I thought that was a funny joke. You guys just, you just you did leave well. me. Every week, you guys <laughs> leave me out there. I'm just, where's the support, fellas? Well, look, are we going to win this game? Against a, a pretty ordinary Glenelg outfit. Did want to hope so. Well, we've got a lot of ins and outs. That's that's a bit of an issue for us. Um, you know, Paul Stewart's going to be a massive loss, and so is Tom Cleary. And, and the arch again, it's going to be a big ish, uh, issue for us. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I think it's going to be. Uh, I think we're still good enough, but I can see that all the ins and outs are going to be very disruptive for the squad at the same time. Yeah. So the the likelihood is it's going to be around about five changes. So there's a yeah. bit of disruption there, but you, you look at our list and, you know, it's still a very good side with a lot of very good SANFL players in it at the moment. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm really excited to see Robbie Young. Uh, I thought his game against uh, Norwood, which, which was the last one I saw... Uh, I thought he was fantastic, so uh, it'll be good to see what he can do again. Yep. Yep, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Jakey Neat. I reckon um, you know he's just about there in terms of getting a recall at AFL level, so hopefully he can have a big game and, and push his uh, his case for selection again. Also, keen to see child? Sammy Russell. What about your love child, Mason Shaw? Mason Shaw, he's been disappointing. Hopefully he can uh, play up forward this week with uh, Johnny Butcher out of the side and uh, and kick a few goals. Because I think he needs to show something pretty soon. Well, there was the uh, that in- interesting debate on Big Footy about our next tall forward and, and then someone saying that Mason might want to go home. And, uh, well, I mean, good luck to him if that's what he wants to do. But at the same time, he hasn't really shown enough that... Why would the Western Australian clubs really be that interested, to be honest? They wouldn't. No, that's true. I mean, Frio probably need another toll forward on their list that's uh, that's ready to go. And I guess Mason Shaw's up, getting up to that sort of age profile that would interest them. But you know, he just needs to put some performances together and you know, clunk some marks and kick a few goals up forward. And you know, he'll get his chance at AFL level soon enough if he can do that. I think if these uh, the Magpies players want to uh, get an incentive as to why they should be beating these guys from Glenelg and just really thrashing them, they just need to watch those uh, 1990 Premiership videos. Yes. They were pretty inspiring in terms of just the, yeah, the animosity. And it's it's not the same as it was with Norwood in terms of like a respect because you it's just that whole, I don't know, it's just pure hatred. Yeah, it's just like yeah. you, the scum between your toes. <laughs> yes, indeed. 
Mm. So, who's going to the game? I won't be. I can no longer go down to Adelaide this weekend, so I won't be there. And it's also my uh, son's first birthday that day, so no, I'm I'm out for that one. What a better way to spend your son's first birthday than taking him to the football. I'm sure he would love that. I'm sure my wife would be absolutely thrilled. That, uh, just think, just <laughs> that think of the AFL that. players that he would be able to meet at the game. Indeed. And have, yeah, have a I'm kick sure. and a catch on the ground. Yep. I'm, he's very what? good at kicking and catching, given he's been walking for about four weeks. So he's, he's done well. <laughs> 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 Did you want to talk about that, Macca? That great initiative by the Port Adelaide Football Club? No, I thought we spoke about it earlier, but if you want to bring it up again, yep, go for your life. <laughs> oh, I thought you were waiting for the SANFL section to bring it up. <laughs> yeah, but then we spoke about it in the AFL section, so... <laughs> no, I thought you might have had more to add. No, not really. <laughs> no, that's, uh, I thought we covered it well, Rick. It was uh, well covered. <laughs> Sorry. I should That's tell right. well, is, it, is it some sort of anniversary game this weekend? Like 25 years celebration of 1990? Well, I guess it'll be the 25 years celebration of 1990, yeah. So they'll be doing that because it's at the Albert and Oval. So, yeah, it'll be good. Yeah, because Matt asked me, Matt Sullivan asked if I was coming down, and I said, well, I'd like to, but I don't think I'll, I'll be able to get down there, unfortunately. Um, yep. But, yes, that was uh, it's a, a good celebration. It was a great year. 1990, and I think the 1870 hour are, are reviewing it still as as we uh, as we speak. Yep, absolutely they are, and you know it's been great listening on uh, on Tuesday nights to their show, and you know they are going, uh, they're almost up to the finals now, so up to the business end of the season where a lot of uh, interesting things happen. So tune in on Tuesday nights and uh, and listen to that show; it's fantastic. Awesome. So we'll move on and. Quickly talk about to the the rest of the AFL and obviously the the big news this week that uh, Mick Malthouse was sacked and I've got to say Rick you called this at the start of the year in the preview you said that uh, Malthouse would be sacked by mid year and it's actually happened. Did I? You did. <laughs> yep. Gee, I'm quite prophetic, aren't I? Yes. I can't well, even was that remember. Was prophetic that. or? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it was a bit of a road crash waiting to happen, wasn't it? Um, hmm. It was uh, it was pretty predictable, uh, yep. and I feel sorry for him. Well, I don't feel sorry for him actually because he's had a fantastic career. So there's nothing to feel sorry for. But it was, it was almost painful. It's as as painful as Carlton having as many Friday night go- games as they do. Yeah. Oh, look, it was pretty ugly. What's happened over the last couple of weeks or so, and I guess it was inevitable that he was going to get sacked at some point this year. And you know, I guess. Um, it's probably better for their supporters that it's done quickly and as quick as possible and, you know, they can move on and start uh, rebuilding their list. Did you see the ins and outs for this week? Yeah, it's not going to be pretty tomorrow night. Uh, <laughs> yet another Friday night game for Carlton. And look, it could be a record loss, <laughs> to be honest. It could be absolutely massive. I mean, what sort of a massacre are they expecting? No Judd, no Murphy, no Gibbs. Uh, you know, they're threatened. No, well, Warnock's no real loss. Um, but, um, yeah, they're three best on ballers and they've just pulled them out. Mm. Sydney will be licking their lips and saying, here comes the percentage. Yes. Hey, um, can you do me a favour next time, Macca? Can you compare Robbie Warnock to um, Matthew Lowe, player statistic wise? Why? I just I'd be interested to see the comparison figures between the two players. Okay. That'd be good. So what are the Fair marquee enough. games for this weekend? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. I don't know what it's uh, it's, it's what gonna be doing? that interesting. <laughs> Look, Richmond versus Essendon's gonna be pretty good. That'll be a, a, an interesting game. Richmond obviously beat us last week. So, you know, Dustin Fletcher playing his 400th AFL game, which is a, a massive achievement there. Something that um, I guess a lot of people probably didn't think would be seen again. Um, but, you know, good on him. And obviously Brent Harvey's uh, right up his hammer as well. So he'll be getting his 400th soon. And look, Collingwood versus North Melbourne, that should be a pretty good game as well, you would think. Mm. 
I'm interested to see um, how much Frio pump the Crows by. Because uh, if the Crows are going to be taken seriously this year, you think this is the game. They have to take this big scalp. Um, if they, and I can't see them knocking off Fremantle, to be honest. Um, but, oh, I can. Can I you? No. Nah. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if they did. I would not be surprised. What were, their, what were their ins this week? Did they have any good ones? Uh, Henderson's in, carriages out with an ankle, but, you know, they're still without Sloan and a couple of other players, I guess. But I and think. Brad um, Crouch. And Brad Crouch, yeah. I, and I guess Douglas. this is the sort of. Yeah, and Douglas, this is the sort of. Um, <laughs> any others, Rick? Or is that it? <laughs> and Brody uh, Smith. I guess. It, and Brody Smith, yes, indeed. <laughs> well, maybe they won't win. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they true, won't. Dude. You never know. Not, but uh, look, no, nah, look. I mean, this is the sort of game that the Crows tend to win when they're under the pump and you know the underdog, and you, they do often come up in these games at home. So you know, I think they're a big chance of winning this one. Yeah, I just, I just don't. I think with those names that I slowly leaked out to you one at a time there. Um, I'd, if they had all those players back and they'd lost a couple, I reckon they could have been a, real, a chance to fight back. But you know, there's a bit of midfield grunt there that they're uh, they're not getting. So, uh, and they're pretty solely relying on uh, little Eddie Betts, the master of all master forward pockets of all time. Um, you know where every pocket is got his name on it. Um, I just yeah, I just can't see them stopping the juggernaut that is Freo at this point in time. Mm. But I'm looking forward to watching them lose. It'll make me feel better when we've lost by eight goals. Not going to happen, Rick. <laughs> okay. I hope I'm wrong. Mm. All right. Well, that's uh, that's me done. Should we? Uh, done should well. we shut down? We should shut down. All right, boys. Shut down. I'm happy to take Have requests a good weekend. For next week. No requests. No more singing, Rick. Should I make another bet? Like if if we lose to a team, I'll I'll sing their song again. But you're betting with yourself. No one is making this bet with you. That's the thing. <laughs> well, we'll have to put a call out. I like the suggestion today actually about going down and singing at training to punish the team if they lose. Yeah, no one wants that. That would be banned by the Geneva Convention. <laughs> yeah, cruel and unusual punishment, <clears throat> violation of human rights. Exactly. <laughs> Kenny Hinckley will come down and tell you to f off. <laughs> That's what he'll do. I'll say I'm a Fremantle spy. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Uh, All right, boys, boys Janus, bro- thanks for coming on again. No worries. Pleasure yeah, thanks, thanks Anus. No worries. Great to have you back. You always crack me up. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, I couldn't help Ah, Rick. Well done. (laughs) Thank you very much. All right, boys. Bye. Out of here. Power. 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 Gathered though by Broadbent through the middle of the ground. Now a long kick down in the Paul Stewart direction. He marks and plays on. He keeps his footing. Got away from Ferrito to put the ball out of the